um welcome guys um uh, my name is Joel and I'm Lalas from Jam Tutorials and this is our first ever YouTube video so today we'll be studying with mathematics which covers the syllabus for grade 10 11 and 12 so please be kind enough to invite others to this page or at least share a link if you think it might be helpful after us so today we are starting with the most basic things the laws of exponents algebra and all that sweet stuff for you grade 12 you might see this as easy but please watch it you may spot something you might need in future um starting with the laws of exponents the first law states that if you have a same bases multiplying each other in order to solve that you have to take one base and add the exponents i'm sure many of you are familiar with that law and it's easy to apply but i would like to add what um what i would like to talk about is is the case where you have maybe um 2a times maybe 4a from that first law you could see that the bases are the same a and a then the coefficients are different so you have to apply the same law in the bases you will have to take a and the exponent there let's put maybe a power of 2 there so for the bases you will say it's a then you take the 2 plus 1 which will give you a cubed but what about the coefficients there you have to multiply them because the sign there is multiply so in order to get the overall answer you would have to say 2 times 4 which would give you 8 then a squared times a squared which is what we did here i'm sorry for my bad writing guys but that's 2 plus 1 which would give us a to the power of 3 okay that's it um let me just remove this um the second law coming to the second law same applies i know guys you can use that law but what if you've got coefficients say for instance let's make the same case we say we've got um let's say we have 4 a to the power of 4 let's say that is 4 okay divided by maybe 2 a so the second law states that if you have same bases dividing each other you need to subtract the word their exponents so in this case let's deal with this part first of bases you will be having a to the power of 4 minus i'm running out of space but you say 4 minus 1 there which will be a to the power of 3 what is your overall answer the overall answer you will have to consider the coefficients what is 4 divided by 2 i'm sure you can all agree with me that it is 2 so your overall answer would be 2 a to the power of 3 forgive me guys for for writing like this i don't have space on my on my gadget here um quickly moving to the third law let me just erase this quickly moving to the third law it says that if you have two terms inside a bracket all raised to the power of one exponent what you basically need to do is to take each term and raise it to that power of the bracket 
as in like if you have two a all to the power of four if they tell you to simplify this this law says you need to give each term there the power on the bracket so if you are having two a all to the power of four your answer there would have to be two to the power of four that is the first term remember it's 2a so there's a multiplication sign there but i'm just going to put a dot and a to the power of 4 you can go further to simplify it what is 2 to the power of 4 you can use your calculator to to find out that um what if you had um what if you had something like this having two a to the power of six all raised to the power of let's say two the law still applies guys the reason why in the first in the previous example we put four there and we put four there it was because the exponents there were one so basically what we did we said one multiplied by the power outside which we which was one times four then it was four now you will do the same thing here you'll say there is a one there that we do not write in mathematics so you'll be having two to the power of one times two which is two and a to the power of six times two you will go further to simplify it six times two is twelve so your overall answer would be for a to the power of 12 okay i'm only simplifying guys i'm not i'm not adding something new that we don't know um okay moving to the i think the third law and the fourth law are they are clear but uh either way i'm going to explain them so it says that if you are having two terms dividing each other all inside a bracket raised to the power of the exponent so basically what you have to do is give each other each term the exponent the term on the numerator and the term on the denominator what is important guys is that you must know how to reverse to reverse these um these laws for instance if you are given 2 to the power of 2 divided by 4 to the power of 2 you need to be able to reverse that to be 2 over 4 all to the power of 2 so i'm not going to continue um explaining these laws i'm just going to look for an example in our i'm going to find us some work to do there um where do i find it okay let's take this one um rather it's let's yes something like that and then let's make it smaller let's put it over here okay so if we were to to apply these laws let's take a look at the first one it says four times four all to the power of two a times four to the power of two times four to the power of a would apply the first law to solve this one so what does the first law say it says when you multiply bases that are the same which are the bases that are the same here it's four 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 what does that law say further you must add the exponent so i'm just going to write the answer for the first one here so i'm just going to take one base as the law states and add all the exponents what the exponent on the first 
base it's one there i think you can all agree me and then you must add what's the second one it's two a what's the third one it's two the fourth one it's a so what will be your answer you will only collect the like terms here guys which one are the like terms one and two are the like terms so you will be having three there two a plus a another like term which will be three a there you have it you can simplify it further but i just want you guys to have the basic idea of the you can pause the video if you if you like so that you cannot be left behind i'm just gonna try to be moving a little bit faster let's look at the second example the second example says three squared divided by two to the minus three which law do you think would apply there guys which law when you are dividing the same so which law would you apply in the second problem we are not going to do them all guys um let's i'm just going to pick out the the one that seemed difficult so we are not going to do number two i'm just going to say how would you do it i don't think there's a law of exponent you can use there because the laws of exponents mainly include problems with same basis so if you are thinking you could use the second law that states that the second sorry the if same bases are dividing each other you must subtract the exponents three and two are not identical guys so what you will do there is simply use your calculator three squared will be nine and two to the minus three i believe will be one over eight so you'll be having nine divided by one over eight which i think should be 72 okay on that note guys um there's something that i forgot there are two definitions that i did not talk about they are not necessarily laws of exponents but rather definitions the definition says any base raised to the power of zero equates to one if i'm saying any base um Many teachers usually say any number raised to the power of zero, and that is true, but the reason why I'm saying it's a base, one day you could find that it could be a variable, not a number. So if you're wondering if what is 1000 raised to the power of zero, you know today that it is one. What is one million to the power of zero? It is one. What is your name all raised to the power of zero it is one any base raised to the power of zero equates to one another definition guys will be that if a to the power of minus one sorry a to the power of minus one equals to one over a the definition is like that guys i don't think i will explain further but I will rather make an example with a number. For instance, if you can punch your calculator and find out what is 2 to the minus 1, from this definition, you could see that anything that I raised to the power of negative 1 should be equal to 1 divided by that basis. So this time, it will be 1 over Two. you can punch your calculator 3 to the power of negative 1 would equate to 1 over 3 so I was looking firstly at number 6 which is 1 over 4 all to the power of 0 so from that definition that says any base raised to the power of 0 should equate to not you could see that um, you could easily find a solution there um, let's um, let's look at number three it's nothing new it's what we talked about um, 
we said there when you have terms inside a bracket raised to any exponent what you should do is to multiply the exponents inside so for number three you could see that there is an exponent of one for three so we would say one times two that one of the exponent of three so you'd be having three squared p raised to the power of five you will say p to the power of that exponent which is five multiplied by that one in the outside which is two so we will go further to simplify three squared i believe it's nine and p five times two will be raised to the power of ten okay guys um i don't think there's nothing okay let's look at let's look at number five let's look at number five it seems quite interesting so let me just remove this um okay so number five remember guys you must remember that i told you that you must be able to reverse the what the laws of exponents you must be able to reverse them so let's look at that number five it says five all to the power of z minus one close the bracket all raised to the power of two you'll remember that from your first law of exponents it is said that when bases are the same you what you multiply the exponents yes so if you can see there if you can reverse that it will be 5 to the power of z multiplying 5 to the power of negative 1 all raised to the power of two guys sorry that's two let's say it's two yes so if you see that you've made it simpler or rather it is z here sorry i'm just gonna write on top of it it's going to be clumsy but it's z so if you were to further simplify that how would you do that remember that law that says if you have everything inside a bracket raised to the power of an exponent you must multiply each of them so the second step there will be to have 5 raised to the power of z multiplying that to what's 2 times z guys i'm sure you are all saying it's 2 z multiplied by um what is 5 to the power of minus 1 times 2? I'm sure you are all saying it's 5 to the power of minus 2. Minus 2, then plus 5 to the power of z. There. What do you do further do? Let me just make space here. My gadget has a very small space. But I'm just going to leave the last step. We are going to continue up there. What will be the next step? You could see that you can reverse that. It says 5 to the power of 2z. It's not 22, guys. Rather, 2z multiplying 5 to the power of minus 2. You can redo that. The first law you must add the exponents if you have same basis so for that you can have 5 all raised to the power of 2 z minus 2 plus i don't want to write on top of the image plus 5 squared i don't think um there's nothing further there you can do I think you can just leave it like this. The question was saying simplify, guys. Okay. I want us to move from the laws of exponents. So I'm just going to try to, to open a new.
Um, wow, technology. Sorry, I must have done the okay. So I want us guys to move to the second thing rational exponents and sets. But rather, I will start with the sets, laws of sets, so that we can get familiar with them. So, if you can just put it there at the corner, we have laws of sets. What are sets, guys? <clears throat> sets are actually those numbers that you find under square roots. Actually, they are, yes, they are numbers that you find under square root that can not be expressed as a fraction. They are irrational, guys. Irrational, irrational to mean that they cannot be written in a fraction form or they cannot occur okay in a terminating sequence. So we've got laws here of sets, but firstly, I would, try, I would like to bring you to the light of like and unlike sets uh say for instance we have um oh sorry i forgot to put my pen there say for instance you are having something like that um anything under the square root there i'm just going to write a is called a radicand and you will have a degree of the power they somewhere in this area so it can either be a square root a cube root fourth root fifth root and so on and so forth but um what i want to say um is that the thing that determines whether sets are like or unlike is the power which is there the area that I've just circled there. So if you, for instance, had a root of A and um, root of B, you would realize that right there at the degree of the power, you are having two there. You are also having two there at B. So that's, that's what makes them like sets we say these ones are like sets i will show you because the first rule there applies to like sets if for instance you had um say for instance the cube root of a and let's say maybe b these sets are not like sets guys why are they not like sets? Because the degree there, it's cube, there it's square. So we said that the thing that differentiates between sets is the power or the degree of their roots. So I'm just going to erase this. So I was saying all of this because I wanted you to bring you in the light of the first law of sets. The first law of sets says if you have like sets multiplying each other, you can put them, you can take the radicands. Remember, I said the radicands are the terms you find under the root. You can take the radicand and raise them to that same degree. So, for instance, if I'm having... um square root of 2 i'm multiplying square root of um let's just say 4. so how you would be expected to solve this is that you will first have to identify that these are like sets why like sets because they have the same degree so the second step you will have to take the radicands and put them under the same roots and say two times for going further you'll be having root of eight yes guys that's the that's what the first rule rather a law of sets say 
Let's come to the second law of sets. The second law of sets says that if you have like, I want you to study it from the right hand side, the second law and going to the left. If you have like sets dividing each other, you can take the radicands, put them under the same root and raise them to the same degree. If you can see it's the same thing, so I'm just going to make an example. If we are having a cube root of A divided by a cube root of B, it is mathematically acceptable that you can write this as, let's say it's three there, you can write this as a over b under the same root. You will see, guys, we will make an example. So we will see the use of these rules. They make things simpler. They make mathematics simpler. Moving to the third law. The third law of sets states that um, if you are having two roots multiplying each other, or rather overlapping like that what you can do you can take the degree of the roots and multiply them say for instance i'm having i'm just going to make it um let's first have that one and have that one and maybe add another one sometimes you can see many roots guys even eight roots under the same place let's say maybe we have three there we have four there you have two there and we are having a there what would be the solution of this the solution you that would be that you have to multiply all the degrees you will have to say the first degree which is the cube root three multiplied by the fourth root multiplied by the square root so the solution to this will be something like this so you would have to say three times four which is twelve three times four from there and then multiplied by two there you would get the root of 24 so that's basically what the third law of sets is saying it's very easy guys nothing complicated but you will see when we do an example let me just erase here um let's look at the third law sorry i mean the fourth law the fourth law is the most important one that we are going to come across with um that law states <coughs> states that if you want to write um any sorry i forgot to put a pen there if you want to write any term without writing a square root if it is given in a root form basically what do you have to do let me just write it here say for instance i'm having b let me say i'm having c there and b is raised to the power of a if you want to remove the square root for any you will use this in many ways in mathematics so if you want to remove that square root what you basically have to do is to divide the exponent there with the degree there be it it's negative 5 or negative 1 over 2 but what you what you have to do is to divide by the root there that is you will keep the radicand or the b there and raise to the power a divide by what guys the degree there divided by c so for instance if i had um if i had something like this it is two 
I want to remove the square root. What would I do, guys? I will write 2 raised to the power. What is the exponent of 2? Which is 1 divided by the degree of the root. What is the degree of that root? It's a square root. So we'll divide it by 2, guys. We'll divide it by 2. Okay. Um, sorry. I want to pull out the eraser. So it's that simple, but if you are having difficulties understanding or maybe are moving too fast, you can pause the video, um, go back if you want, and make sure you get the most basic idea because these are the basic ideas of mathematics, guys. Next week, um, we'll have to be moving very fast. We'll have to be applying these laws in other topics are uh, coming to the last law which is more or less the same of the law we've just did so be it the power of the sorry the power of the is it of the radicand that is is it a to the power of m under the square root all all of it is raised to all of the square root is raised to the power of m what do you have to do if you want to remove the square root you divide guys you divide with the word with the degree of the root so I, i'm not going to make an example for this one i'm just going to pull out some questions so that we can see what we can do so let's take this one mm. Let's just put it on top of that one. Yes, if you if you were to answer these questions, so you'll see that that one it says root two times root of thirty two. Our first very law, guys. It says if you are having like sets multiplying each other, what must you do? You must take the radicands and put them under one root of that degree this time it's a square root what is a radicand it's any term under a root guys so what will be your solution to the first one you'd have to say root of 2 times 32 this is all under the same square root what is 2 times 32 it's 64 i'm sure you can all agree it's 64 from there whatever method you use but you know we all know that a square root of 64 should be 8 so however is either first you would have to um rather let's okay let's let me just erase this i want us to use the laws not a calculator to solve this one so we had uh, a root of 64 which we know should be 8 but what if you were told to not use a calculator or maybe you were in a competition you forgot what the root of 64 um there's one important um thing that i forgot to tell you guys that um, in order to not use a calculator to solve these ones, you must know how to express the number or the term under the square root um, in terms of its prime factors. Prime factors to mean that they must be prime numbers. So how can you do that? For example, what would 64 look like if you were to express it in its what in its prime factors? um 64 um let me say in order to to express any term in or in its prime factors what you do is take your case your calculator you punch the number in this case it's 64 then you say equal then shift then there's a small button um which has um, a labeling of fact in alphabets it it is denoted by alphabet b 
if you punch fact there you will see that the answer that will come will be 2 to the power of 6 so for any number say for instance you want to know what are the prime factors of 100 so follow these steps you say 100 equal shift fact then the, the prime factors of the number will appear so this time 64 can be expressed as let me write a square root can be expressed as 2 to the power of 6 let's apply another law guys what if you want to remove the square root we had a law that catered for that how do you remove a square root guys you take the radicand and raise it to whatever power it is raised this time it is raised to the power of 6 what must you do next divide it by any degree which is in this area the degree of a root which is divided by this time the square root so it's 2 so what is 6 divided by 2 sorry that i wrote it this must be an exponent so 6 divided by 2 is 2 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 3 is 8 guys um that was very easy let's move on the next one let's first erase this mm. let's look at the, the third one guys oh sorry rather the second one what would you do if you were to solve it remember guys these are the like sets why are they like sets because they are raised to the same degree that is the cube root in this case so what law would cater for us the law of sets i think it is the second one so it states that if you if you are having that you can write it under the same root which is three this time let's take it that is three and you are having 24 divided by um I'm sorry about that guys um my gadget is giving me technical problems as we are saying you would have to take the radicands and divide them or rather put them in the same root 24 divided by 3 what would it be um i think it would be 8 so you'll be having something a cube root of 8 now let's not use a calculator guys you want to express 8 as its prime factor what you do do you don't know what is 8 you go to your calculator you press 8 equal shift fact your a calculator will give you something like 2 to the power of 3 so it's something like that you do not want to use a calculator what do you do next you want to remove the square root what is the law that caters for this situation you want to write your 2 to the power of 3 and divide it by any degree which is there sorry i forgot to write 3 there dividing that by 3 we know that 3 divided by 3 is what is 3 so we'll be left with an answer of 2 um okay let's do the the third one so i'm sure all of you guys are eager to to attempt it if you want to you can pause it um and then come back for for a solution so which locators for that number three i'm sure you guys are all agreeing that we have done it what do you do when you have many roots under one another so the first thing you would have to do is to take one root and multiply all the degrees guys so you have two there on the first root we have two on the second one so two times two will be four so for any examiner the, the step there would definitely have a mark what is the second step you will have to write 
um, 81 as the product of its prime factors but you do not want to use a kq sorry you do not know it so we follow the same step that we did so you write 81 equal shift fact your calculator should give you something like 3 to the power of 4 under that so you are having 4 there you want to remove the square root you take 3 to the power of 4 remember it's this 3 to the power of 4 then you divide it by any degree of the root this time it is the fourth root what is 4 divided by 4 guys it's 1 and you'll be left with an answer of 3 okay um moving on to the next one let's um i want us to talk about rational exponents rational exponents guys um, or rather let's let's first make an example let's make an an example if how were you going to simplify the following sets so if you if you could all agree with me that these ones are easy so i'm just going to answer them i'm not going to talk uh, because we've been doing them for some time now so for the first one you will first have to have something like this So the answer would be 7. The second one, you can write it like this. Um, I'm just going to to erase because I've run out of space to erase the first one here because I do not want to write over the picture so after this you'll be having something like remember i said you can write 2 to the negative of 1 as 1 over 2 3 to the power of negative 1 1 over 3 and you'll be having a final answer of 1 over 6 there right guys um okay so I'm quickly going to to move to something that grade elevens must have already done this year or rather are still getting busy with. We come to rationalizing the denominator guys. Um, what am i looking for here rationalizing the denominator 
Um, I can't. I can't seem to find. Um, my folder here, but I'm just going to. We're going to do it. Uh, I'm just going to put in. Uh, wow, my gadget is seriously giving me issues here. It's clear that I'm not used to it. Wow, that's it. So I'm just going to put it over there. Okay, guys. Um, there's a process called um rationalizing a denominator. So basically, the importance of the of this process of rationalizing denominator in any method don't expect it to be your question one to be your question two grade elevens will be asked specifically to rationalize a denominator but grade twelves you did it in grade eleven so for you guys it will come when you least expect it to come you will not be specifically asked to rationalize the denominator but rather you'll be solved one sorry you'll be asked to solve one of those um non-routine questions which are not done in class so we will have to have an idea so how would you have an idea if you need to rationalize a denominator for any problem guys you cannot solve anything with a denominator as a set guys you cannot do that so any situation you're having a problem with a denominator as a set you'll know that you have to first rationalize the denominator so how would you rationalize a denominator say for instance we are having something like a root um should i put a root there mm, yeah no, but, uh, let's say it's root a divided by root b and you want to rationalize so what you do have to do is take the denominator itself and multiply with it both sides you will see at the end of the process we will not be having a neat denominator as a word as a set or something having a square root so what you have to do is grade 9 and 10 work just multiplying you will remember from the laws of previously done that these are like sets sorry sorry for that guys and um, these are like sets why like sets because they are raised um to the root of the same degree so in the numerator you'll be having something like this um a b in the denominator you'd be having something like you would also agree that they are roots of of the same degree so they are like roots so you can have b times b under the same square root what is b times b guys it's b squared under a square root how would you remove the square root from those laws of sets guys i'm sure you can all agree that you have to um sorry for a little bit um you have to i'm just going to write it here so you'll be having root of a b divided by b squared under a square root so there's nothing we can do further on the numerator i'm just going to leave it as it is a b there um but what we can do on the denominator how would you remove the the the, the root there i'm sure you can all agree that um you can write everything under the square root and then divide the two there by a power or the degree of the root there which is in this case two why two we do not write that two so what is two divided by two it's one so we would end up with an answer like this a b divided by b 
it's be there guys so i wanted to show you how to rationalize a denominator but i just use rationalizing denominator with the with one term there what if you were to rationalize um something with the two terms let's say rationalizing something like a over let's say root b plus c so if you were to rationalize something like that what you have to do you always take the denominator guys and multiply with it on this side but if you are having two terms there what you have to do is just to change the the sign so there um let me write it down here you would have to write it as something like this uh, root b plus c what did i say you have to multiply with the denominator so i'm just going to leave the sign and put c there divide it there by root b and put c there so if you notice that in the first example we divide sorry we multiplied with something that does not actually change the value of the fraction um for instance if you take it the right hand side from here to of, of the right hand side this thing will be one if you were to simplify it because it's a root b plus or minus c root b plus or minus c so it's one so what i was trying to say guys is that when we are having two terms and we are trying to rationalize the denominator you will have to change a sign if you have a plus sign there you'll have to put a minus sign there if we had a minus sign there you would have to put a plus sign there nothing much so i'm just going to erase this and move it to the top i can't uh maybe i will figure out in the in more tutorials to come how to move the whole thing i'm sure there's an option but it's just that i haven't um figured it out um i believe it was um a over root b plus a then we multiplied it with the root b minus a root b minus a so the thing that will um okay guys is that um you will do whatever you do at the numerator i'm not interested at the numerator here uh, because you cannot you cannot be defeated by um multiplying that numerator it's very easy i want you to see the trend here guys is that the numbers or the terms under the square roots here sorry i forgot to would always be the same so anytime you multiply them they will always give you a square so we are having b plus a b minus a so we are having a difference of two squares there so we would we will always have um a square somewhere there so don't make a mistake make sure you have a square that will what that will cancel out the word uh the square root there many of you are familiar with the with the saying that uh we cancel the square root with the word with a square the reverse uh the opposite of that is very true ladies and gentlemen we cancel the square of any term or any any value with a square root so let's go further answering this one i uh, will say a times that you'll be having a root b minus a times a minus a squared that's the numerator let's come to the denominator the terms are alike why do i say they are alike or identical they are raised to the same degree there so you would have to put them under the same square root so you'll be having b plus a multiplying by b minus a 
I'm sorry, I yeah, there's an A there, another same square root. So simply it will be another square root B squared minus A squared under a word a square root. Yes, it will be something like that. So we can go further there to group them. If you take out a common factor there, you will see that it will be... So I'm just going to leave the numerator because there's nothing you can do further. I'm just going to continue with the denominator. So if you were to go further there, you'd have to take out because you can see they are both raised to the what? To the to the power of 2 so we'll be having b minus a all raised to the power of 2 divided by the 2 y divided by 2 is the degree of the root there guys so your final answer would actually be something like this so i'm just going to to erase here if you but you can pause the video, go back if there's something you think you missed. So the final answer of the of this will be something like this. So what I want to to understand is that whenever you are rationalizing a denominator, you are making it um having no set or rather you are making it rational because I did mention that um sets are irrational numbers so if you are having a set at the denominator that denominator is irrational so that is why we call the process rationalizing denominator um we'll wrap up this video tutorial guys with one last thing um i'm just going to erase this so the purpose of all what we've been saying guys comes back to to your question one question um two even question three for you grade 11 um solving for x you are going to need all these rules guys or at least some of them to answer these questions most people um don't like solving for x i don't know why but if you can revisit all the laws we we've went through today you will see these questions are very easy um before we answer that um please forgive me guys there's one small part i forgot um, and that is how to to deal with the rational exponents rational to mean they are in fraction form so for instance if um i had something like um a uh sorry guys i keep forgetting so if i had something like a to the power of two over let's say three equates to what um let's say it equates to b or let's rather say it equates to whatever you can equate it but let's say it's b but what if you wanted to solve for a the questions here would say solve for a how would you remove this rational exponent it's easy guys we had already mentioned it but i just wanted you to see it in the light of the reciprocal so if you remember quite carefully we said that um in order to come here you'd have a square root uh rather not a square root a cube root guys it will be three there and you'll be having a squared here so you can move from this point to oh sorry guys to to that point up there in fact i did mention it and i did say you must know how to reverse these things so you can see that you are having a cube root of 
a squared how do you remove guys the the root you will take any power there if there's nothing you must know there's always one guys you must divide it by the root there so that is why you will be having two which is there divided by three but i just wanted you guys to view this in the light of a reciprocal another way you would eliminate the fraction there so how would you eliminate is by multiplying the, the exponent by its reciprocal its reciprocal to mean that you invert the denominator the denominator becomes the numerator and the opposite is true guys so we'll multiply this with 3 over 2 whatever in maths you do on the left hand side you would have to do it on the right so you would have to do it there guys so if you see that you see that it's 2 times 3 which is 6 divided by 3 times which is 6 so you will be left with a equating to b to the power of 3 over 2 multiplied by the 1 there so nothing much so we are going to wrap up with these questions guys um yeah <clears throat> so how would you solve for x in the first question there it says 2 to the power of x plus 1 minus 32 equates to 0 guys this, in in this type of problems you will have to use the method that i mentioned earlier you must know how to write any value in terms of its what in terms of its prime factors guys so you'd see there that you are having 2 to the x plus 1 minus 32 if you were to to take the negative 32 to the right hand side you will be having something like this 2 to the x plus 1 equating to 32 there's a rule guys i'm just going gonna keep adding them i keep forgetting um there's a rule but i'm sure you are, most of you are familiar with it that if you are having same basis you can equate the word the exponents please guys do not cancel them just equate them so the first step here would have to write 32 as its base sorry as a, as a product of its prime factors so i already mentioned the method you take 32 equal shift fact and you'll see that 32 can be written as 2 to the power of five if i'm not mistaken i'm not having a calculator with me um plus one there so there comes that rule it says when you have same bases um on the left and right hand side you are allowed it is well within mathematical rules to what to equate the exponents do not cancel guys do not cancel this two and that two that is very incorrect so the next step you will have to say x plus one equals to five then what do you want to do the question said solve for unknown variable the unknown here is x you would have to take the one to the right hand side so you would have to use the the inverse of addition the additive inverse of addition is negative when you take five to that side it will be negative so you'll be having five minus one which is four and having your x equating to four there guys now the most and important step guys is to always check your answer if it is correct is to always confirm your answer if it is correct because you can make a mistake so if we were to take that x to if we were to go back to where we started um or to the very problem as we are given and substitute with the value of x whatever on the left hand side should correspond on the right hand side so if you were to put that 4 on that 2 to the x plus 1 minus 32 that left hand side you definitely have to equate to 0 since the right hand side equates to 0 so what's 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 guys it's 2 to the power of 5 what's 2 to the power of 5 is 32 32 minus 2 sorry minus 32 it's 0 so that one is good um it is correct um guys this is it from us you i'm gonna leave number two three and four for you to attempt 
so please guys do invite others to this page or rather share the link and please guys do leave your comments on the comment section if you are having questions let me know so that you can be able to improve on our next video uh, from gem tutorials this is it from us thank you